So today we're going to be talking about ultrasound. The goal of this video is to not only give you an introduction to ultrasound, but we're going to do a little bit of ultrasound, do an eFast exam, just a quick overview, um, so that it'll help you when you get out on rotation, and especially if you're interested in ultrasound, this should give you a taste of some of the basics and how to get set up and you know help someone do an ultrasound if you're not going to do it yourself. So we're in the room now. We're going to talk about the ultrasound machine a little bit. This is a, an older machine from uh, Sonosite. Um, but we'll talk about the basics. Today we're going to be using a curvilinear probe. It's a combo of a linear probe and then a phased array, which will go deep. So your linear probe is a flat line. We'll try and put a picture in. Um, that's going to be for like vascular structures and skin, things like that. Uh, this curvilinear is great for doing a fast exam. You get to have a deeper view. You can control the depth, but you can also still look at the heart and, and do a long exam with a probe like this. And then a phased array probe is a very deep probe you use for like an echo or looking at the heart, deeper structures, you can use them for a fast exam as well. But since we have this probe, I prefer to use that for a fast, so we'll do that. So what is ultrasound? Uh, basically we're using sound waves to get a look inside the body. So you can see on the screen here, and we'll get video of this actually doing an ultrasound in a little bit, um, you're looking at basically a gray snowstorm. And it's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at at first, but... Um, Essentially, these are sound waves penetrating into a substance. They won't pass through air, and they won't pass through solids. So if you're on bone, you're just going to see artifact. You won't see anything. And if you're over air, you also won't see anything. The waves can't pass through. It needs to be a solid medium, like tissue or fluid. So in ultrasound, we use a lot of windows. Like liver is a viewing window. Um, a stomach full of liquid could be a partial viewing window. So um, you'll hear that term thrown around. So let's talk a little bit about the specifics of movement with ultrasound. So here I have a small device called a V-Scan. There's multiple variations of this. Butterfly is another company out that will plug right into your iPhone. The nice thing about this is it's small and you can fit it right in your pocket. Um, so it's a joint probe. You can see the linear probe is a small linear probe like I was talking about. It's flat. This is good for surface things. And this is a phased array which is great for cardiac. You'll see there's no curvilinear here so you would have to use a combination of these two to get your desired fast exam. Now, inside this probe is actually a crystal. That's what generates the sound wave. So these are very delicate, and when you do get a chance to use ultrasound, you want to be very careful of the cords that connect it to the machine on both a, a full stand-up machine as well as a small handheld. And you want to be very careful of the transducer here. You never want to let this drop or hit the floor, anything like that. So you can see there's a lot of functions on this machine. One of the things I want to point out that you'll use most often, this is your total gain, the lowest knob here. We have then a far field gain and a near field gain. So we can change the brightness of the image with those three knobs as well as lock them in place. Now a lot of machines are touchscreen and don't quite look like this now, but um, there are many other functions. Depth is another one, changing how deep you're scanning. That's another button you'll be looking for. And then over here you can see the different modes. I'm not going to go into a lot of that today. Color would be looking at arteries and things like that for flow. Uh, M mode is our motion detection mode. It's a uh, Again, we won't go into that much today. We're just going to focus on the basics of ultrasound and doing an eFast, which is what you'll most likely do on an ER rotation. So we've got Stephanie here. She has generously agreed to be part of the video today. Um, so she'll be our scanning model. We're going to go ahead and get started with a fast exam, and we'll talk about some of the motions here, and then we'll break into the actual exam. So one of the other things I want to point out is the indicator here. You'll see this, this probe, unfortunately, has nubs on both sides, but it's got more on one side. The side that's got more stuff going on, or a light, that's usually the indicator side, and that will correspond to an indicator light on your screen. In our case, it's a small blue dot. So you'll want to have that usually towards the patient's right or towards their head. So we're going to start our eFAST exam. The first view we're going to get is called Morrison's Pouch. This is an interface between the liver and the kidney on the patient's right side. Obviously, the liver's on the right side, so that's a good way to remember Morrison's Pouch. So we'll come in. I like to hold the probe, um, some people will hold it like a pencil. For this view, I like to have my hand on the bottom, it's just more comfortable. Come in along the bottom of the bed, and as we get the camera in a little bit here, we can see that we've got the kidney in view, and the liver is over here. Kidney right here, with our calyces and the renal pelvis. So a great view here, and what we want to do, this motion is called fanning. So I'm just fanning through the kidney, and I'm actually watching this border here, between the liver and the kidney, if we saw a black stripe there, that would indicate fluid. And we actually get a view of some of the hepatic uh, vasculature in here. So we're looking in the liver there, it's pretty high up. And we come back down, we've got the kidney. And we can actually just take a look at the bottom of the kidney as well. And it all looks very healthy there. So no fluid, and that portion of the exam is considered done. So my personal order for the FAST exam, I like to go right side compare to the left side. That's just the way that I do it. Um, so we're going to take a look at the spleen interface now. 
and look at the diaphragm over there as well as you can get the stomach in this view. So we'll put some gel on here. Now again, indicator towards the head and the general tip is to just kind of put your knuckles down and, and look up for that view and we can see the kidney popping in right here. So healthy looking kidney and there's no fluid, no uh, white or black striping there, I'm sorry. So we can see spleen against the kidney and both look good. Again, uh, there's some splenic vasculature there actually. Um, we don't see any stripe and so this would be a negative fast exam here as well. We want to get a good view through the whole kidney. So here we are, we have the probe, again, indicator is facing towards the patient's right. And now I'm holding it more like a pencil. In this area, obviously, you want to be sensitive to the patient. Don't uh, rest your hand down in their uh, private area, but you want to get a good stabilization here, and I'll kind of describe that when we get to the cardiac area. And basically what I'm doing here, we're looking for the bladder, and it is tough to see. Uh, Stephanie has gone to the restroom recently, so there's not going to be a large distended bladder here. Um, but we're looking for uh, fluid in the posterior cul-de-sac area there. So again, we would kind of fan through. You can go transverse as well, indicator towards the head, and go side to side. And you really need to angle this down towards the, the patient's pubis symphysis almost. Um, so we'll look in that area for fluid, and obviously none today. And a distended bladder does help this, but it's not necessary. So now we're going to be doing the cardiac portion. Now this is just a quick look. This is an, an echo. There's many more views that we could talk about, and we're not going to today. So this is just a sub-xiphoid view. And again, with the curvilinear, it's not ideal. I've increased the depth here a little bit. And if we push down, and if Stephanie can take a deep breath in, we see the heart pop in here. You can see uh, your chamber's contracting. It's kind of difficult to identify what's going on here, um, just based on this probe. And we may try with the phased array just to get a better view. But you're looking for the hard stripe as the, as the pericardium and ensuring that there's no fluid in there. Um, and obviously, we don't see any. And we're using the liver as a window. So here's my uh, probe. It's pressing through, shooting through the liver, and getting the uh, heart over here. So. That is the sub view. All right, so here we're gonna take a look at the lungs. I've switched probes to the linear just to show you that lung exam. And we'll look over here on the other footage. Go ahead, take a deep breath in, Stephanie. You can see that motion, it's like a shimmering there. And out. And that's that classic ants on a log. So that's a very good sign. This is a rib here, again. We can't see any sound waves past it. And then the shimmering sign there. And just real quick, we'll show the M mode. We put it over this region, uh, and then we could select this. I believe on this one, you hit M mode again. And you'll see this um, sandy shore pattern here, so it's like the shore and the water or something like that. Um, people really talk in those terms, but uh, essentially, if you saw a barcode sign, as they say, that would uh, indicate a pneumothorax, I believe. So I don't use that mode a ton, but that is another way to look at that. So I've switched to the phase array probe, which again gives the deepest penetration to see the cardiac view. Um, I just wanted to try and give a better view of this so everyone can see the heart. So um, for this, I'm going to point towards the right side, but there is debate between emergency medicine and cardiology on which way to point. I believe cardiology goes to the left, um, so a traditional echo, the indicator will be to the left, and that's why on my screen now, it's showing it to the left. So I like to go to the right, it just depends. So we'll do the same thing here, a little bit of pressure. Okay, and there is Stephanie's heart. This is a sub xiphoid view. Should I take a deep breath? You can take a deep breath and hold it. Good, perfect. And we can see a four chamber view there, that's awesome. Bring it back in there. So we can see our valves and all four chambers. All right, so that's the basics of a FAST exam. That's actually an E-FAST exam when you include the lungs in there. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Again, big thank you to Stephanie for agreeing to uh, be a model for us. The big tips to take home, you wanna hold the probe kind of like a pencil, like I was saying, um, and you want to almost have your hand resting on the patient. The more stability you have, uh, the better. When you start ultrasound, obviously, you know, getting a book, learning some of the images is really important, but also just learning how to make fine movements. Uh, most of the folks that start ultrasound get very frustrated because they can't find anything, and it's just because they're moving way too quickly. You know, you'll see movements like this, looking for something. It's never going to happen. As you saw, it's very fine movements, um, and anything quick, it's because you know what you're looking for. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you like the video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you learned, if there's anything else that you'd like to see. And as always, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.